this I'm keeping secrets in my head Or any space you can find Glad to see that I can help Make your life a bit easier But have you ever thought of how I felt? You need to think about your behavior Boy, what a long week, huh? It's only Thursday. We got less than three more hours and it'll be Friday. And happy birthday to me. Hey, welcome to another edition of Butch on Sports. Simply Butch here as, as always. Thanks for tuning in here, boys and girls here. Yes, on a Thursday evening here, we give you some sports news that you can't get enough of. And let's have at it here as we get to some news that, yes, hopefully you believe. The Detroit Tigers, we've talked about them. Everyone has known that this is going to be a trying year for many of us. The coaches, the players, and even you, the fans, as this week has been a chilly, snowy, cold kind of week. Until today, Thursday, when the weather was pretty doggone upbeat, 55 degrees at one point in time during the Tigers game between the uh, Baltimore Orioles and Detroit Tigers today. Detroit Tigers came out on top this afternoon, 13-8. Yes, to completing a three-game sweep, two of them in deep flash cold weather. Leonis Martin hit his first grand slam as part of a 5-1 fifth inning. He finished with a double short of a cycle, finishing three for five, with three runs scored, four RBIs. Jeremy Canaleros, four for four, with a walk and three RBIs. Yep, the third straight win for the Detroit Tigers and the sixth straight loss for the Baltimore Orioles. What a deal here, boys and girls. And, you know, let's not get hot because Kansas City's coming into town and bust everybody's bubble, and they're just as bad as the Detroit Tigers. But it's been a good week for the Detroit Tigers as a coming back team there. Detroit Tigers played on Wednesday night here, thanks to Dixon Mikado's walk-off home run in the ninth inning. He let it off and got that out of the way here. Tigers have bounced in and out, in and out with, you know, runs and uh, trying to tie it up. One thing for sure this week that they have accomplished and gotten a little bit better up. That's knocking the runs in, not leaving runners on base. Now, I'm not saying that's a cure, but I'm saying that they're getting better at now, recognizing the fact when you got men on base, you only get one and only a chance to get those runners in. And they're doing things by getting those base hits left and right and center. Hey, Miguel Cabrera is warming up. Victor Martinez is warming up. And I'm quite sure some other players are going to warm up. Hey, John Hicks, he warmed up here in and, and the eighth inning on Wednesday and hit a three-run homer to give him a, a lead, only to lose it. But again, Dixon McConnell took care of that. Miguel Cabrera's birthday was Wednesday. And I'm just sorry I didn't go down to the stadium today because I had other obligations to say happy birthday to him. Because he normally says happy birthday to me the next day. And that's been going on for like maybe four or five years now that we have known each other. Birthday is right next to each other. However, <clears throat> Tigers have been doing a lot better. Now, here's one thing for sure, and, I, and I've noticed it there. You know, the Tigers starting pitching again is only worth what you put it out to be. They're not a long type of drawing team to do some major, major pitching here. 
Zimmerman pitched today. Uh, he lo- lost a little touch after the fifth inning, giving up runs, and uh, got anybody scared. Got me scared. Because, again, the Tigers have many occasions have had runs and had leads and lost them, only to fight back. Now, fighting back is not a complaint that I make of the Detroit Tigers. They've been doing that all along all the year. And I'm very happy with that. I'm quite sure other fans are looking at that, too. That's something they didn't bring last year to the table, that fight back routine. However, again, Hopefully it gets better, not worse. They got three. No, let me take that line back. Four games to play. They got a doubleheader with um, Kansas City. An evening and a day. And I do believe that is tomorrow. Hopefully I'm right on that one there. But they don't. They got four games with Kansas City, a makeup game, of course. And hopefully they'll get better at it. The Lions, Detroit Lions, have mixed and matched a whole lot of players and getting less than one week away from the rookie draft that's upcoming on next Thursday. Rasheem Pringle has been signed as a free agent to the Detroit Lions on Wednesday afternoon. Pringle, 24, coming to the Lions after spending a stint with the Green Bay Packers, who signed him as an undrafted free agent from the Southern Utah last year. Pringle was out of camp, however, landed up in Jacksonville. Jacksonville's practice squad before ending the 2017 season back with the Packers practice squad. Pringle plays his college football with the Thunderbirds where he was running back and a wide receiver as a player in 33 games in his collegiate career. Pringle recorded 1,130 yards, 14 touchdowns, 200 and 28 carries while catching 36 passes for 329 yards and one touchdown. Pringle also saw time as a kickoff returner. In 2016, he averaged 19.7 yards on 15 returns with a score. That means he returned one back going all the way. Yes. Boy, oh boy. That's something you can hang your head on. However... It's not always the ones you can hang your head on in trade lines. As they are having, again, those, 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 those camps going on, trying to get themselves together, get themselves abreast for the season upcoming. However, today, yes, boys and girls, today, the Lions finally got their schedule in pack. So let's go over that schedule. We already know the preseason schedule. The preseason schedule is with Oakland on August third, uh, August the 9th, August 16th, that week, uh, New York Giants, the 24th at Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers, and August the, uh, the 30th or 31st, Cleveland Browns. Uh, the first two games are TBD. That means they haven't decided what day they're going to play. I really should say August the 9th through the 13th. And I really should say on the second one against the Giants when they come home between the 16th and the 20th. The Friday game is the only one in scroll on August 24th when they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. And also the 30th and the 31st, it was the Cleveland Browns when they come at home. But again, that game has not been set in scroll either. So we'll wait for those particular times to come up later on. However, the regular season schedule is out, and that's in scroll. The Lions start off the season against the New York Jets at home. That game will be on Monday night. ESPN will take the reins on that particular one at 7-10. A national televised game. First off the, off the bench. Sunday, the 16th at San Francisco. That's a 4-0-5 game on Fox. Sunday the 23rd at the New England Patriots coming to town on a Sunday night. That's an 8-20 game. That's a national televised game on NBC. Sunday the 30th, the Dallas Cowboys uh, reign in Dallas. 1 o'clock game on Fox. Sunday, October the 7th, Green Bay Packers on Fox. 1 o'clock game. 
Sunday, October 14th, that is a bye week for the Detroit Lions. The sixth week this year, they will have a bye week. However, the next week on October the 21st, they're at the Miami Dolphins at 1 o'clock. That's on Fox. Yes, Sunday the 28th, at home, Seattle Seahawks, 1 o'clock game on Fox. Sunday, the November the 4th, at the Minnesota Vikings, 1 o'clock game on Fox. Sunday, November the 11th, at the Chicago Bears, 1 o'clock game on Fox. Then the Lions get three in a row. Sunday, November the 18th, Carolina Panthers reign in the uh, Motor City at Ford Field, 1 o'clock game on Fox. Thursday, yes, Thursday is Thanksgiving. And what about the Chicago Bears coming into town on Thanksgiving? That's a 12-30 game on CBS, National Televised Game. Sunday, December 2nd, Los Angeles Rams coming into town on Fox, 1 o'clock. Sunday, December 9th, at Arizona Cardinals, 425. Sunday, December the 16th, at the Buffalo Bills, 1 o'clock game on Fox. Sunday, December the 23rd, the Minnesota Vikings coming to town. That's the last home game of the season, 1 o'clock game on Fox. And finally, on their 17th week, their 16th game, uh, the Detroit Lions taking on the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay, 1 o'clock game. That is the schedule. Fourth with for, yes, the Detroit Lions this season. So you can't get enough of one. You can get enough of the other. But there we have it there. Uh, some exciting games to be had. And uh, we'll see how the Detroit Lions do with their regular season already up in scroll here. When we get the rest of this, uh, the preseason schedule, hopefully we'll give that to you with the quick quickness, of course, there. Let's move on here, boys and girls, with the Detroit Pistons projected to be well over the salary cap, $101 million salary cap for the 2018-19 season. That's meaning some big-time free agents isn't arriving this summer. And that's going to be a huge discussion with Stan Van Gundy and Tom Gores. Yeah, with the big roster salaries of Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond, Reggie Jackson, and John Lure, this is a team group of young and cheap players possibly to need to fill the roster. So, if you're not healthy, you don't help a dog on thing. John Lure did not give any help to the Detroit Pistons this year. Reggie Jackson did not give any help to the Detroit Pistons this year. Andre Drummond, huge improvement. Huge one. Some things he got to still work on, but he, it was a big improvement. Free throws. Uh, he's always rebounding offensively and defensively, of course, and his scoring got better. Blake Griffin, we want to see that guy totally healthy. That means totally healthy means a Blake Griffin can do a whole heck of a lot of things. And hopefully we get players, which they have not been short of, to come in and spell those particular starters and come in with some energy and some fire and some spunk. Because that's what good teams have, that bench. We'll find out who's going to be the coach this year when they have that talk and conversation. Of course, the draft won't help them much either as the Detroit Pistons who finished the season with the 12th worst record. Will likely send their 2018 first round lottery pick to the Los Angeles Clippers. That smells the high heaven. I'm just, just saying. By the way, on Thursday night football, as we skid and skedaddle all over the doggone place here, we're gonna have new pre pre hostess or new improved hosts on Thursday night. Guess who's going to be the host on Thursday night football? Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Michael Strahan. Going to lead the Thursday night football pregame show live from New York City. Not from Hollywood, like they do with Fox. 
Of course, they still work for Fox. Bradshaw, along with provide analysts with straight hand serving as the host of the show. Of course, Strahan does Good Morning America and some other things. He's a very good interviewer, too. So, you know, and, and, you, know you, you give him an opportunity. Chris Webber does an outstanding job on the NBA uh, Players Only as a host for that. And I think Strahan can do just as good of a job as uh, Chris Webber does for the basketball. So we'll see that. New host. Yeah. Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Michael Strahan. They had the new Thursday night football pregame show, live from New York, for the 2018 NFL season. And that begins, by the way, week number four. The new show will air on about 7.30 on Fox Broadcasting Network and the NFL Network, taking up viewers up to kickoff. You got two, two, two stations in one. And they'll be showing Thursday Night Football. Of course, Fox got the big contract that for a good amount of years will be doing the Thursday Night Package on Thursday Night Football. CBS and NBC had the opportunity. Had the opportunity. Oh, well. What can I say? Um... <clears throat> We want to kind of, you know, kind of slow down the pace here right quick and uh, give some homage to when wrestling was about when I was first looking at wrestling. One of the things that, you know, we I looked at is Bobo Brazil, Fred Curry, Bull Curry, Mark Lewin. Yes, uh, Bobo Brazil, Dick the Bruiser, Kurt Snyder. And the list goes on and on and on. But one of the wrestlers that you would get a second whiff with every now and then would come into your town would be somebody like a Ric Flair or this particular wrestler, Bruno San Martino, who held championship belt for the organization when it came to be known as the WWE for more than 11 years from the 60s and the 70s and continued to perform in professional wrestling. Bruno San Martino was the man. He came up as a weightlifter because everybody was picking on him and bullying him around. So he learned how to build up his body with weight and became a very stylish, good-looking wrestler, or for that matter, a good-looking person who can protect himself at a moment's bound. He took that into the wrestling ring, and he became one of the best, most famous wrestlers known in town. You mentioned the WWE or the WWE, as it was once called. It was Bruno San Martino who was leading the reign. And that was once upon a time when wrestling was done in territories. Elden Owens in the, in the Pacific Northwest. Vince McMahon Sr. in the Northeast. In the South, is that Florida wrestling or the South wrestling? And the list goes on the AAWA in Texas and whatnot. And the list goes on and on and on. Hollywood wrestling on the West Coast. Everything was done in what you call territories. Of course, you cannot disbar what was going on in Minnesota or the Great White North in Minnesota. Well, Winnipeg and Stampede Wrestling was uh, a famous thing where you had great, great wrestling with the Hart family and the Hennings in that uh, in that North type of uh, division, or I should say territory. Bruno San Martino was a famous guy. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, has been battling health issues in the last few months. He passed away peacefully with his wife, Carol, and his two children by his side uh, was reported by KDKA in Pittsburgh. That's where he was living. And it's sad to, to hear of some a man like Bruno San Martino, who did a lot for wrestling and brought wrestling in your living room and in your home. I remember when USA Wrestling, 
back in the 80s when really many people got national attention to wrestling and the WWE got national attention was way in the early 80s when the USA Network would do wrestling from the arenas. Not in the style that they do it right now, but the arena style or the style that you would get when you went to the Kobo Arena like once upon a time when I was a kid, mom used to take me down there to watch Bobo Brazil, The Sheik, Mark Lewin, uh, Pampero Furpo, uh, whoo, Crybaby Cannon. It was done in the arena style, so you didn't get all these these ho hum uh, type of interviews and whatnot. There, you would get wrestling back to back to back. You might get a five minute pause for the next match to come into play. You got straight up wrestling for three hours. And it was fun. Especially when the arena was full. Back then it was Cobo Arena. 11,000 people come on in there. Now you got arenas with 15,000 people. And half the dog on stage taken up where there are 4,000 more could come in there and see it. But they can't because WWE have a stage in there blocking the majority of that one side of the dog on arena. But that's okay. That's okay. By the way, how did you like WrestleMania? How did you like the the, the, the changes from SmackDown? And also, the Monday Night Raw. We'll see how that goes as they did announce also that no longer they'll do just uh, a Sunday special, a monthly special with just SmackDown or Raw. They'll be combined wrestlers from both of the particular shows doing all this, pe- the, uh, what should I say? The special event wrestling matches like Backlash is first of all coming up. And of course, you don't want to forget next Friday, uh, should it be this coming Friday? Or next Friday, I should say here. I think it's this next Friday. Uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, just want to remind you, the 50-man battle roll. Isn't that exciting? 50 men in the ring. I'm done for this evening, boys and girls. We're going to take Friday off because I can. But we'll do it on Saturday morning and give you some uh, sports news you can't get enough of. We'll have some interviews from the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Goody two-shoe here uh, of um, hopefully good tidings. Hopefully they can win a double hatter. A day and a night. Well, when are they going to get back to doing things the right way? You know, we didn't have these dogs on days where they had to start early and you know, late in March where everybody freezes to death. How about a traditional double hatter? Back to back to back. Oh, well. It's good to dream, ain't it? Hey, we'll take care of this on Saturday. Butch on Sports is a presentation of Oh My Darling Productions. Hey, check us on out at the game show dot potbean dot com where one that shows that I, I come on maybe at 645. Next two weeks will be on Monday. Just want to announce that. Of course, you got Dave Dave McCaig and his show from Boston Pizza and the Sports Center Iron Grill. And of course me with the podcast of Butcher on Sports. Doing it live and direct from a location near you. Yes, indeed, from Metropolitan Detroit, Michigan. Hopefully everybody's lights are on, everybody's safe. Have a very good Thursday or a good Friday. Put your on sports is again a presentation of Oh My Darling Productions. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And happy birthday to me.